Watch Beverly on defense. He's doing Pat Bev things. There are very few players in this league that are as paralyzing as this guy right here, Patrick Beverly. I've been wanting to make a video on this guy for a while, but I just I just couldn't get the words out. I just couldn't really phrase the things I want to say properly, but now I think I can. But first, we gotta get into his backstory. We gotta get into why a lot of people have a problem with this guy, man. And why, although there's people that like him, there are just as many people that don't like him. The other night after, um, you know, again, another uh, off game for Russ and the Lakers lost, oh. you wrote... Uh, that he was the real magician. Uh, this story was, you know, a while ago. I think this is the introduction for many to Beverly when he injured Westbrook. And these two went at it for a while, for a couple of years now. You know, a lot of history between these two. But I thought I'd show this video to really highlight what I think is the biggest turning point to how people perceive Beverly. Pat Bev trick y'all, man, like you play defense. He don't guard nobody, man. Just running around doing nothing. And you could tell Beverly to this day, he's held on to these comments and he's waited for an opportunity like this for a long time. You, you, you know, people looked at me differently. People around the NBA, yeah. coaches, players. Like, after that, people were just taking the ball, just going at me. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, all because of what one person said. And this game, when they played each other, this was a more recent game after the interview he did with JJ Redick where... Patrick Beverly did show up, and he did make Westbrook and the entire Lakers team look stupid. I mean, this this celebration right here where he's flexing on LeBron and just yelling at his face. You could tell he was having so much fun here. And they kept going. Four, the three, rush from the corner. But you may think to yourself, isn't this what the NBA is all about? Why is there people that hate Beverly? I mean, he's just showing up when he needs to. But there's more. Was there something that sort of set you off that you would shove him like that? No, it was just frustration. This is one of those moments that will forever stain Beverly's legacy. Devin Booker's at half court talking to the fans. Ball for three, puts it in! Obviously, the Phoenix are routing the Clippers, and, you know, it's normal for you to be frustrated, but to be this frustrated to where you push somebody... That's too much. Oh, what? I mean, that's as unsportsmanlike as it gets. Patrick Beverly losing control. You know, added on to like, you know, you go, and you know the refs aren't going to foul out Chris Paul. You go for a layup, he pulls you to the side, you fall on your side. I don't know, you miss layup real bad. It looks like you're trash, but the whole time, like, ref, he's just literally yanking you out the air. Like, you know, like, you guys didn't see that, but okay. Look, I know people have problems with the way Chris Paul plays sometimes. You know, he finesses the system, as he said in this interview. But come on, man. That doesn't just mean now you can push him and, you know, potentially break his neck. Come on. That's just, that's dangerous. That's unsportsmanlike. Like, that's dirty. That's Bush League. Clearly, Chris Paul was happy after this. And you know what will make me happy right now? If you just sub right now. Just click that subscribe button. Join the family. <laughs> now I'm a Raptors fan, so you can see where my frustrations come from here, okay? What is Beverly's issue here? What is his deal? Like, I don't get it. Gee, he just got 13 million last night. And look at, look oh, at this. Here we go. You could tell he woke up on the wrong side of the bet that day, man. He was anti this game. This was the last game before the All-Star break, and he was itching for a fight. Who was it the other day, by the way, that you were guarding and you waved off, you waved off the help? And they drove by you and hit a floater. I'm trying to remember who this was. It went. It uh, was Siakam. It was Siakam. Yeah. He All dribbles right. up. Yeah. But they, you know, of course they don't show everything. He dribbles up. I poke at it. But... Okay, so I'll show you everything. Okay, so right here he pokes the ball off like he says, but then Siakam comes back with the ball, goes to the right side, and just lays it up right here. Bang, easy. Was, uh, Pascal Siakam. He and Beverly. Oh, blue boy, using window. I, I, Take, he takes the ball from half court again. He dribbles up again. I poke at it again. I, I listen to my defensive of, of, of game plan. I send him to us. We can right hand waiting on my help. He makes the left. Yeah. But they go show the lay. They ain't going to show <laughs> when I dipped his ass twice before that. Okay, so right here is a better angle. Look at this. He's just trying to get Siakam by himself. Look at this. Oh, he's trying to get him. He gets cooked. He gets cooked. Stop it, Beverly. Stop it. I saw your tweet last night about uh, Defensive Player of the Year. This is a point that he's made on Twitter, talking about how he's averaged over a steal a game. Now he's averaging just under one block a game as well. And he's 6'1", top five in charges taken. 
yeah, he should be considered for defensive player of the year. There is something wrong here. He is a huge part of what the Timberwolves have been able to do on defense this season. The previous season, they were 26th in defensive rating. And with him coming in this season, and with other defensive schemes adjustments made by Coach Finch, they're now 11th in defensive rating in the league. And I'd say a good part of that is due to how Beverly has played on that end. So for you, what do you think the criteria should be for Defensive Player of the Year? The coaches. Just ask the coaches. Though I agree the coaches would be better judges for this, Beverly still has to take into account that even the coaches can be influenced by the media perception of him. Sing that song. Oh, Patrick Beverly is a nuisance. Oh, he's laughing. He is a, a pest if there's any such thing. But Lucas specifically, what makes him such a tough matchup? One that his his intelligence, like uh, he's physical as fuck and flops at the same time, which is the exact same thing I do. But the media can only go so far in changing a perception of a player when coaches have to game plan around players that are great at defense and that would be a bad matchup for their team. I got uh, fuck, got Patrick Beverly on Steph tonight. Let's try to get Steph as many guard to guard screens so they can switch. Okay, if you're doing that, that tells me right there that. You don't want Patrick Beverly guarding Stephen Curry right there. Now, this is where I think Pat Beverly's logic could backfire here, okay? Say the coaches do have the votes. What if they see all of the Bush League plays he has, all the dirty plays? There is an argument to make that Defensive Player of the Year awards are given to big mans and that the defensive stats favor big mans due to their rebounding abilities. But I think a bigger factor to why he's not being considered is himself. Never in there for whatever reason. Maybe my tactics, maybe I'm too physical. Maybe I'm not with the, with the game. You, do hack. Right you do hack a lot. You, not do that. Hack. you do foul a lot. What's the definition of hack? Someone who fouls a lot. The, and if the ref doesn't call it, that means it isn't a foul. You've been, top th- you've been top three or top 20 in the NBA three times in your career in total fouls. And this is where I have to say, J.J. Reddick's right, man. The fouling. It's, it's just not going to help you in that case when you're being considered for an award like that. And then you add in the antics. I mean, they just never stop. Look, they may be funny at times, and they may also bring fire to the game where, you know, you have a lot of competition and you have a lot of guys that where it rubs off on them and they become better players because of it. And that's where people that don't like him have to face the facts that he is a great defensive player and that his great competitive fire does rub off on his teammates and the franchise gets reinvigorated as a whole. Then the people that love him have to face the facts that his antics hold him back from winning awards, but not just that, also being perceived as something more than a nuisance, an irritant, a pest. And I think that's where both sides can come in the middle and agree that there's the good and the bad when it comes to Beverly. And that's really where the polarization comes from. The fact that he's so good on defense, but then he's also such an annoying player to play against you love him when he's on your team but you hate to have him play against your team that's what beverly is also i made a poll yesterday about this exact question and it was basically 50 50 and that just shows you how polarizing he is man you got people loving him and hating him it's just that simple you're still here there's a video being recommended to you on the screen check it out i think you'll like it Because YouTube thinks you'll like it. Ugh, what a sorry world we live in, controlled by robots.